we're talking about the tree that you get in its presentation and how are you going to wait in and figure out how to train it and to what form. What I have here is a quality tree, yeah. Maybe uh, on a scale of one to 10, it's a B, B plus, if you catch my joke. Uh, and uh, uh, tall, good root system, a number of branches that are fairly long, but uh, the placement of the branches is how shall I say it in a non-technical way? Funky. They are uh, really narrow crotch angles, and there's three that are just jammed together. The narrow crotch angles and the close positioning of the uh, branches here speaks to a weak point of att uh, attachment, and all the more so as it grows up out and becomes laden with more wood and fruit. It'll snap on you. So. What am I going to do? One, I'm going to train it to an open center form. And I'm only going to have three primary scaffolds. And they will be one, two, three. No matter how you try, these three branches are too tight. So I'm just going to eliminate one, and it'll be this one. Just thin it out. And I've got three to work with here. And I want to try to get branches that go more out and then up. So what uh, suits needs in that regard is to cut these back quite a bit. This one right there. This one right here. And this one about like that. What is the desired hope? This grows out, and I will train it that way, and up, similarly, these two. And then I'd have a nice, and the nature of Seckel is that it is upright. That's its genetic nature. With fruit trees, you have two basic genetic tendencies in terms of how they grow. Uh, and that is those that grow upright, the Seckel pair, and these are referred to as acrotonic, the root being acra as an acrobat, you know, people who are not afraid of heights, or acrophobic, people who are afraid of heights. Acrotonic. And the other tree form is basitonic, basal, wide. This is certainly an example of an acrotonic upright growing tree. So I've got these, and that could work out perfectly well. I have a nice uh, uh, upright uh, open center. But there's a little trick. Uh, and it's actually tried and true over hundreds of years with fruit tree growers, and it's been verified by research. And it's called notching. So I'm gonna notch a branch. I'm gonna come here and cut a little, here's a bud. I want this to grow into a branch. I'm gonna cut a little wedge about halfway around the trunk here, and then I'm gonna come up here and kind of create a little rough, crescent shape here. It is highly likely, as a result of doing this, and I'll explain why in a minute, that that will force a bud here, this bud here, to grow a branch. I'll probably do that in one or two other places, and then I'll wait and see what develops this spring. If these branches in their entirety are more to my liking, I'll thin these out or the other way around, or a combination of the five or six possibilities I have here. Uh, so how does this work? It works about like this. Uh, the tip bud in a tree produces a growth hormone called auxin. Now that's not O-X-E-N, but A-U-X-I-N. And it moves down by gravity and it suppresses buds lower on the stem from growing so that it grows the most. I call this the me first gene. Go back to the primordial forest and it suits a tree evolutionarily wise to grow as tall as you can to get the sunlight to the kind of survival of the tallest. Uh, so when you make a notch here, what I've done is I cut slightly into the conductive tissue. The xylem tubes that bring water and nutrients up from the soil, the phloem tubes that bring uh, the auxin I was referring to, the hormone, the suppressing hormone down from the leaves. So what I've done is I've just, in, just slightly interrupted the flow so, so that the auxin that suppresses accumulates slightly above the bud and 
the water and nutrients that come up from the soil accumulate slightly at the bud. So I've just kind of reversed the gradient and it, if you do this when a tree is just planted and if you do this at this time of the year, late winter, right after planting, you've probably got, uh, my experience has been you get about 70-80% positive response. So I'm just kind of hedging my bets here.